ಶತ್ರೂಪ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಅ ಸನ್ ನೇಮ್ಡ್ ಉತ್ತಾನಪಾದ ಉತ್ತಾನಪಾದ ಬ್ರದರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಪ್ರೇಮ್ ಪ್ರತ ಧ್ರುವ ವಾಸ್ ಉತ್ತಾನಪಾದ ಸನ್ ಧ್ರುವ ವಾಸ್ ಸೋ ಡಿವೋಟೆಡ್ ಟು ವಿಷ್ಣು ದಟ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಇಯರ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಅ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹೆವೆನ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಧ್ರುವ ಲೋಕ ಧ್ರುವ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ದ ಪೋಲಾರ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ ದ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಧ್ರುವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ತಪಸ್ಯಾ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಎನ್ಲಿಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪುರಾಣ but also in utanpada's line of born chakshusha he became a manu chakshusha was the sixth manu of the present kalpa in chakshusha manu's line was born vena and vena's son was prithu prithu milked the earth and obtained food grains on which people can survive that is the reason why the earth is known as prithvi prithu story is been narrated in many of the puranas and also in mahabharata and uh, harivamsha prithu son was shikhandi and shikhandi son was shushila shushila was a very religious person he faithfully ruled the vedas and visited several places of pilgrimage his travels eventually brought him to the himalayas through which the sacred river mandakini flowed near the banks of the river was a beautiful hermitage it was there that shushila began to pray to shiva while shushila was thus praying a sage named shweta vartara arrived the sage's body was lean with tapasya and he was smeared with ashes shushila finished praying to shiva and worshiped the sage i am indeed fortunate that i have met you he told swetha vatara please make me your disciple and teach me all that there is to know the sage agreed he taught shushila and several other disciples the knowledge of the shastras shikhandi had a brother named hari vrathana Harivrajna son was Prachitnavarihi. He married Savarna, the daughter of the ocean, and had ten sons. These sons were known as the Prachetas. The Prachetas were devoted to Vishnu and prayed to Vishnu for several years. All ten Prachetas married Marisha and Daksha was born as a result of this marriage. It was this Daksha. who had earlier been born as brahma's son because he quarreled with shiva shiva cursed daksha that he would be born as the son of the prachetas tell us the story of daksha the sage is requested lomaharshana daksha story daksha was brahma's son and had a daughter named sati sati was married to shiva daksha was that shiva's father in law Once Daksha came to visit his son in law but although Shiva worshiped him with all due respect Daksha felt that he had been slighted subsequently when Sati went to visit her father Daksha severely reprimanded her your husband is worse than useless he told his daughter my other son in laws are far superior to him you are not welcome in my house return to your worthless husband sati could not bear to hear this abuse of her husband and immolated herself she was later born as parvati the daughter of himavan and married shiva again shiva was furious to learn that sati had died He visited Daksha and cursed him that he would be born on earth as the son of a Kshatriya. It was thus that Daksha had been born as the son of the Prachetas.
Daksha story is full of inconsistencies in the Puranas. There is an account of a yajna that Daksha performed. Shiva either destroyed this yajna himself or had it destroyed by Virabhadra. But which Daksha performed this yajna? The one who was the son of Brahma or the one who was the son of Prachetas? The Kurva Purana suggests that it was the son of the Prachetas who performed this ceremony. The more customary account such as that in the Bhagavati Purana is that it was Brahma's son who performed the sacrifice. Daksha was angered at Shiva because on one particular occasion Shiva did not stand up to show his respect to him, although Daksha happened to be Shiva's father-in-law. Daksha therefore organized a yajna to which he did not invite Shiva. Sati went to the ceremony uninvited and immolated herself when her father started criticize her husband. Hearing of Sati's death, Shiva destroyed the yajna. He also cursed Daksha that Daksha would have to be born as the son of the Prachetas. To return to the account of the Kurma Purana, the Daksha, who was the son of the Prachetas, organized a yajna. All the gods and sages were invited to this ceremony. But as a result of Daksha's earlier enmity with his son Lila, Shiva was not invited. There was a sage named Dadichi who protested at the slight to Shiva. How can you have a religious ceremony without inviting Shiva? He told Daksha. Shiva is a worthless fellow, replied Daksha. He is not fit to be worshipped together with the other gods. He wears skulls and destroys all that is created. How can he be treated as an equal to the great Vishnu, the preserver of all that one can see? My yajna is dedicated to Vishnu. It is not meant for the likes of Shiva. Dadichi tried to persuade Daksha that Shiva should not be ignored, but Daksha was in no mood to listen. Dadichi refused to take part in such a yajna and assured Daksha that his ceremony would not be successfully completed. He also cursed the other sages who had sided with Daksha, that they would go to hell and would deviate from the path laid down in the Vedas. Daksha went ahead with his yajna. The other gods, including Vishnu, came to attend the ceremony. Meanwhile, Parvati got to know about the yajna and told Shiva, how can there be a ceremony at which you are not invited? Although Daksha used to be my father in my earlier life, this evil act of his should not be condoned. Please destroy the ceremony. Because of Parvati's bidding, Shiva created a demon named Virabhadra. Virabhadra had a thousand heads, a thousand feet, a thousand eyes and a thousand arms. His body shone with radiance like the sun at the time of destruction. The thousand arms held all sorts of weapons in them. What are my orders? Virabhadra asked Shiva. Go and destroy Daksha's yajna, was the reply. Virabhadra ascended a bull and set out for Daksha's house. He created thousands and thousands of demons who would aid him in this task of destruction. These demons were armed with spears, tridents, mazes, clubs and stones. Parvati also created a goddess named Bhadrakali who would help Virabhadra. This strange army arrived at the place where the yajna was being held and said, We are Shiva's followers. We have come to receive Shiva's share of the offering. No offerings have been earmarked for Shiva, replied the gods and the sages. He has not even been invited to the sacrifice. These words angered Virabhadra and he began his task of destruction. His companions uprooted the scaffolding that had been erected on the occasion of the sacrifice. The sacrificial horse was flung into the waters of the river Ganga.
This was an Ashwamedha Yajna that was being performed on the banks of the river Ganga. Virabhadra caught hold of Bhaga and tore out his eyes. He smashed the teeth of the god Pusha. As for the moon god Chandra, Virabhadra gave him a resounding kick and sent him reeling. The fire god Agni had his arms and tongue sliced off by Virabhadra's companions. The sages were kicked and boxed. Vishnu himself came to intervene and Virabhadra began to fight with Vishnu. Vishnu has a wonderful weapon named Sudarshan Chakra and he hurled this at Virabhadra, but Virabhadra easily repelled this weapon with his arrow. Vishnu is carried by Garuda, king of the birds. Garuda attacked Virabhadra, but so fierce was Virabhadra that Garuda had to flee. The entire universe marveled to see that Virabhadra could thus vanquish Vishnu and Garuda. Brahmano arrived and sought to put an end to the fighting. He started to pray to Shiva and Shiva and Parvati arrived on the scene. The assembled gods and sages also began to pray to Shiva and Parvati. Parvati was moved to pity by these prayers. These gods and sages have now sought refuge with you, she told Shiva. Please pardon them their sins. Agreed, replied Shiva. You have my blessings now, but please remember that one cannot have a religious ceremony without I being worshipped. The gods and the sages realized that Shiva was no different from Vishnu. They were really one and the same, different manifestations on the same universal force. When Daksha had earlier been born as the son of Brahma, he had married Ashikli, the daughter of Virana. Daksha and uh, Asikali had 1,000 sons, but the sage Narada had persuaded these sons to become hermits, disinterested in worldly pursuits. First 5,000 sons named the Haryakshavas had been born and Narada had persuaded these sons to become hermits. Next 1,000 sons named the Shalvala Shahs had been born and these had also become hermits at, at Narada's instigation. Thereafter, sixty daughters had been born. To return to the account of Kurma Purana, Daksha and Dasikali had sixty daughters had been married to Dharma, Brahma's son. There is again a contradiction in the creation. Kurma Purana had stated that thirteen daughters had been married to Dharma. The ten daughters who had been married to Dharma were Marutvati, Vasu, Yami, Lamba, Bhanu, Arundhati, Shankalpa, Muhurta, Sandhya and Vishwa. Vishwa's sons were the gods known as the Vishwadevas. Sandhya's sons, the gods known as the Sandhyas. Marutvati's sons, the gods known as the Bhanus. They were born as the sons of Diti and Kashyapa's wife, the Maruts. Muhurta gave birth to time, Lamba to cattle, Yami to snake, Sarundhati to all the objects on earth and Sankalpa to the solution. Thirteen of Daksha's daughters had been married to the sage Kashyapa. Their names were Aditi, Diti, Arishta, Vanu, Shushravasa, Khasa. Surabhi, Vinata, Tamra, Krodhavamsha, Ira, Dhatru, and Muni. Twelve gods known as the Adityas were born as the sons of Aditi. Their names were Amsha, Dhata, Bhaga, Tvasha, Mitra, Varuna, Aryama, Vivaswana, Savita, Pusha, Amshuman, and Vishnu. Danu's sons were demons. Chief among them were Tara, Shambhara, Kapila, Shankara, Swarva, Bhanu, and Vrishwa Parva. Surasa gave birth to the Gandharvas. Arishta's sons were thousands and thousands of snakes. Kadru's sons were also snakes. Tamra's daughters were the ancestors of the bird. Surabhi gave birth to cows and buffaloes and ira to trees and herbs. Khasa was the mother of Yakshas, Muni of 
Apsaras and Krodava Vasha of Rakshasas. Vinita had two sons named Garuda and Aruna. These two sons performed very difficult tapasya. Garuda pleased Vishnu and obtained the boon that he would carry Vishnu around. Aruna pleased Shiva and obtained the boon that he would become the son's charioteer. This leaves Diti. She had two sons named Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. These two sons were demons and their children came to be known as the Daityas. Hiranyakashipu was elder to Hiranyaksha. Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyakashipu pleased Brahma through his prayers. As a result of the boon that he received from Brahma, he became invisible and started to oppress the world. He drew the gods out of heaven. The gods and the sages went to Brahma to persuade him to do something about Hiranyakashipu. I cannot really help you, said Brahma. Go to the northern shores of the great ocean and pray to Vishnu there. I will accompany you. It is Vishnu alone who can find a solution. Brahma led the gods and the sages to the shores of the great ocean and started to pray to Vishnu there. Vishnu appeared before them. Why have all of you come here? He asked. What do you want? It is Hiranyakashipu, replied the gods and sages. He is oppressing the world thanks to a boon received from Brahma. Because of the boon, he can only be killed by you. Please kill him and save the universe. Vishnu created a being out of his body. The being was a gigantic as mountain Sumeru and held a lotus padma, a conch shell and a maze in his hand. Go and kill Hiranyakashipu, Vishnu instructed the being. The being thereupon ascended Garuda and left for Hiranyakashipu's capital. His roars made the ramparts of the city quack. Hiranyakashipu had four sons named Prahalada, Anuradha, Samharada and Hrada. The more usual names are Prahalada, Anuradha, Anulada, Samhalada and Halada. Accompanied by Hiranyakashipu's demon soldiers, these four sons came out to fight with the being, easily repelled all of these. The four princes then unleashed divine weapons on the being. Prahlada used Brahmastra, Anuharada Vaishnavastra, Samharada Komarasta, and Harada Agneyastra. But these divine weapons could do the wonderful being no harm. He merely picked up the princes and flung them far away. On seeing that this, his sons had thus been disposed of, Hiranyakashipu came to fight. He gave the being a resounding kick on his chest and the creatures fled in pain to Vishnu. Vishnu now realized that he would have to take care of Hiranyakashipu himself. He adopted the form of being who was a half man and a half lion. Since Nara means man and Simha means lion, this came to be known as the Narasimha incarnation of Tara of Vishnu. Go and kill this particular creature, Hiranyakashipu instructed Prahlada. Prahlada and his brothers tried to fight with Vishnu, but were defeated easily. Hiranyakashipu now sent his brother Hiranyaksha to fight. Hiranyaksha used several weapons on Vishnu, including the divine weapon known as Pashupata. But these weapons could do Vishnu no harm. Meanwhile, Prahlada had realized that this being could be none other than Vishnu, he started to pray to Vishnu. He requested his soul, brothers, uncles and father not to fight with Vishnu. Vishnu smote Hiranyakashipu's chest with his claws and thereby killed him. He also killed Anuradha, Samhradha and Aradha. A fairly common story in the Purana such as the Vishnu Purana is the story of Prahlada. Despite being Hiranyakashipu's son, Prahlada was devoted to Vishnu from his childhood. Hiranyakashipu had no desire to have a son who was devoted to Vishnu and did his level best to kill Prahlada. But Prahlada was protected by Vishnu and survived all these attempts. In the final incident, Narasimha appeared while Hiranyakashipu was arguing with Prahlada and killed the demon king. Vishnu then crowned Prahlada king in Aranyakashipu's palace. 
there was no question of Hiranyaksha becoming king after Hiranyakashipu. In the more common account, Hiranyaksha was the elder brother and had already been killed by Vishnu in his boar Varaha in- incarnation. It was Hiranyaksha's death that led the Hiranyakashipu hatred of Vishnu. There is thus some variance between this more common account and that related by the Kurma Purana.